Hello. A visitor to late medieval Coventry would have been met with the rather impressive sight of three large churches in close proximity. Holy Trinity, a complete 12th century parish church, St Michael's, its spire seen here on the right, that became a cathedral in 1918 and was destroyed by bombs in the Second World War, and St Mary's, the priory church of a Benedictine monastery that became a cathedral under Bishop Robert Limesey, a former chaplain to William I. St Mary's is the only cathedral that was completely demolished after the Reformation. Rediscovered in the early years of the 20th century, its excavated remains can be seen in what is now Priory Garden and in the Priory Visitor Centre. In 1075, the Bishopric of Lichfield moved temporarily to Chester. After Robert Limes's appointment as Bishop in 1085, he transferred his seat to Coventry and St Mary's became a cathedral. The Monastery of St Mary's had been founded by Earl Leofric of Mercia and his famous wife Lady Godiva around 1020, probably on the site of an existing church. Coventry was more stable than either Lichfield or Chester, and St Mary's was a rich monastic house, much better endowed and wealthier than Chester. From the fragmentary dating evidence, it has not been possible to prove Bishop Limesey instigated a rebuild of St Mary's after his arrival, but both Lichfield and Chester had major makeovers while he was in charge, and I think we can be reasonably sure. Procedurally, Coventry and Lichfield were equal, but there was ongoing rivalry between the monks of Coventry and the secular canons of Lichfield. Several disputes between the two establishments ended up being referred to Rome for adjudication. Despite Coventry's growing economic importance, Lichfield increasingly became the focus of successive bishops' activities and regained its status as co-cathedral in a combined diocese of Coventry and Lichfield in 1148. St Mary's occupied a raised site and was well built with a strong tower. In 1143, during the period of history known as the Anarchy, Robert de Marmion of Tamworth Castle, a supporter of King Stephen against his rival for the throne, the Empress Matilda, recognised its strategic potential, commandeered the cathedral, expelled the monks, fortified the building and dug a series of defensive surrounding ditches in order to launch an attack on Coventry Castle, garrisoned by forces loyal to Matilda. Besieged by Ranulf, Earl of Chester, Marmion's horse slipped in one of the ditches as he made a sortie, throwing him to the ground where he was killed as he lay injured. The monks returned, but the violent history of St Mary's had another twist. In 1189, with the backing of Pope Clement III, although against the wishes of Baldwin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Bishop Hugh Nonant decided to convert monastic St Mary's into a secular cathedral declaring, I call my clerks gods and my monks demons. The monks are forcibly ejected once again, only to return on the orders of a new Pope, Celestine III, just eight years later in 1197. With two great parish churches alongside and a secular cathedral at Lichfield, monastic St Mary's was in the firing line after dissolution in 1539. The site was sold and the buildings demolished piecemeal for the scrap value of their fabric. Although much is still speculation, various excavations undertaken after remnants were revealed in 1909 and two digs by Channel 4's time team for programmes aired in 1999 and 2001 have informed our understanding of St Mary's. Overall the cathedral measured 425 feet around 130 metres in length, some 20 metres longer than Lichfield. The nave was of a similar width to Lichfield at 145 feet or 44 metres, an indication both buildings were rebuilt at the same time. Flanking towers made the west front of St Mary's wider. While there is no certainty Coventry had three spires like Lichfield, it is entirely possible. 
with a building period conjecturally beginning towards the end of the 11th century, interrupted by civil war during the anarchy and continuing in phases until the mid 13th century, archaeological evidence confirmed a Romanesque East End and an early Gothic nave and west front with subsequent changes. Tantalisingly incomplete fragments of the early Saxon church, parts of which may have stood until St Mary's was finished, have been uncovered. The most substantial remains of the medieval cathedral are of the west front, where an arc of steps led into the nave and the bases of the first nave pillars can be seen. The lower portion of a spiral staircase that once led to a northwest tower and the base of a giant supporting pillar suggest a showpiece west front somewhere in style between Wells and Litchfield. A section of the south wall and the centre of the nave are now the Priory Garden. All that's visible of the east end sits alongside Coventry's new cathedral. The visitor centre was closed for a period and although since reopened, at the time of recording, a question mark remains over its long-term future. Among the items on display is a fragment of a remarkably well-preserved mid-14th century wall painting from the Chapter House, discovered in 2002. The still vivid scene has been identified as St John and the Elders, as described in Revelations chapter 4. A further fragment was found later, and they give an idea of how colourful medieval St Mary's would have been. Having made several references to Litchfield Cathedral in this video, that will be my topic next time. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.